described as being a violin, a violin with a rotary bow and, keyed, uh, and keys uh, to aid in the fingering. There's also the trumpet effect, which is actually a bowing technique that makes the little bridge vibrate, and that's what sounds like this. trumpet effect is with the right hand. Now, tonight you're going to hear others speak about drone music, whether they'll mention, I'm sure you'll learn many things from them and that they're very knowledgeable, and I'm looking forward to hearing what they have to say. But of course, if you want to know the deep and true mystical meaning <laughs> of drone music, and you must go back to the days of ancient Greece when the Pythagoreans, the followers of Mr. Gore, Mr. Peter Gore, <laughs> knew that the music of the spheres, of the stars up above, we could hear, except since we've always heard it, we don't realize it. And he realized this when a hurdy-gurdy man was outside of his window. And he yelled out the window, Eureka! Which a lot of people think, <laughs> you know, had Archimedes with the gold and Eureka, I found it and everything I had. But what he meant is, Eureka, you stink! <laughs> ah, good one. <laughs>
anybody have a question? Yes. Okay. It looks like you have six strings that run through there. Right. Are, are five of them capable of being drones and then you have one melody? No, I have four drones okay. of which I can choose. I don't have to play all of them all the time. And I was playing just two of the four right now. Uh -huh. And I have two melody strings that are in unison okay. and they're doubled uh, for volume. Huh. Yes? When you're talking about drone music, being in touch with the music of the spirits, music that we are so familiar with, we can't even hear, are you talking just ignorance to audible sounds? Or are you talking more so along the lines of just any kind of vibration coming off of why audible or not the consciousness is perceptible? Well, actually, I'm talking bullshit. That's <laughs> 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 joking around. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> just joking around. I mean, I sort of believe it, but that's a joke too. I mean, I like you know, like, in other words, the concept is really cool. That the stars are going around and there's like, Ooh, we don't hear it. Because, listen, that's it. And that's sort of cool. <laughs> and I always wanted to write a series of novels <laughs> about series. these Pythagoreans. That's the one, but <laughs> no, that the, these Pythagorean cult has this machine that's sort of like a, a candle and a crystal, and you turn a handle just like a hurdy gurdy, <laughs> and it makes the crystal turn around and the light goes through it, and with the incense burning, you see pro like projected hologram, <laughs> <laughs> and all sorts of things, but one of them is like an atlas of the world. And of course, like the Romans want to get hold of it. That's in book one. <laughs> and later on, it's like in the Middle Ages, there's one, and then in the Renaissance, or like 18th century, it's Protestants against the Catholics trying to get in in the, in the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> He's actually Sean Connery. <laughs> the impersonator. <laughs> no, what I mean is, isn't it amazing that the Greeks could like look up at the sky and figure out the things that they did? That's incredible. Yeah. You know, that, that we go around the sun, that the moon goes around us, and that the, you know, and that the other stars and everything they even figured out how big the earth was by measuring the shadows on, on a certain day, and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, all that is amazing. And what it has to do with the hurdy-gurdy and drones, <laughs> well, it's sort of cool to like link them up together <laughs> because we have to try to experience the inexperienceable. Uh, we have to try to express the inexpressible and like swirling stuff and drones <laughs> and, and, and the more they stone the better. <laughs> they really seem to go together in a way. That, like, I'm sure there are great professors who could tell you, you know, the history of all that and everything. But it, it works. <laughs> so, because it's, you know, in Italian, the name for the hurdy-gurdy is La Gironda, which doesn't mean anything except La Gironda. But uh, if you were to pronounce it incorrectly, instead of G-H-I, just G-I, it would be Gironda. And because... Uh, when you say you have a headache in, in Italian, you say, my head is turning, la, la testa in gira, like that. So people think this is called gironda because it gives you a headache. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>